Here is the graph of a function f of x. Now the function has a, uh, a rule, which in this case is minus x squared minus 4x. And so I like to think of a, a function as a number machine, like a big old fashioned meat grinding uh, sort of a machine with a funnel on one side where you put the numbers in. And uh, I imagine this bracket here is like that funnel. You drop the number in, you drop a number in x, and then some gears churn and crunch on the inside, like in this picture that I found on the internet. So you, uh, you just put numbers in, and something happens on the inside, and out they pop. So if you put a 9 in, in this case we're going to get a 13 out. If you put a 7 in, we're going to get a, an 11 out. So that's a different function to the one we've got in the graph. But uh, the idea is that you just put numbers in, and numbers pop out. So if you get that in your head, what's coming up might be a little bit easier to think about. So what we're doing, we're talking about shifting graphs to the right. So here we have this black function, which is the graph of f of x. And here if you put the x value in to the function, an x value of 1 in to the function, you get a minus 5 out. And that's this point here. And if you put an x value of say uh, minus 2 in, then you're going to get 4 out after your gears have crunched, and so on. That's how you get the graph of the function by putting numbers, x numbers in to the function and then pairing them up with a number that comes out and plotting them on the graph. So what happens if we're going to shift the function to the right? Well, what's happening is that uh, it's exactly the same shape as the, uh, the new function. It's a different function. R of x, we'll call it. R for red or R for right. Probably R for right. And the Clearly the rules for these functions are going to be related because they are, this one has just been picked up and shifted across here three units to the right. You know, you can change the amount of shifting that you get. You know, if you shift at one, it only moves one unit, and there it's moved two units. If you shift at no units, it's the same function. So we're going to keep it being shifted three units to the right. And we're going to look at the rule for the new function and how you can find the rule of the new function by using the rule of the old function. Alright, so what happens? The value of the function over here, the value of the new function over here at x equals 4 is minus 5. And so the way you find that using a rule is you, you subtract 3 from this value of, you subtract 3 from 4, because the 3 units you move to the right, and you get x equals 1. And you take that value of 1, that number 1, and you plonk it into the old function, you get a value out of minus 5, and you say that that minus 5 is also the value of the new function at x equals 4. If you go back over here to say uh, x is equal to 2.6 on the new function, x is equal to 2.6, you subtract 3, you get minus 0.4. You put that minus 0.4 number into the old rule, you take the negative of the square and you subtract 4 times that number, you get the value of 1.44 out, and that is the value of the new function over here. Again, and any other point over here, say we'll put in a value of this value of x is equal to minus 2 on the new function. You To find the value, you subtract minus 2, you, you subtract 3 from the minus 2, and you get minus 5. You take that minus 5, you put it inside the old function, you do some number crunching and you get the value of minus 5 out. So that actually makes more sense if we write it down, I think. The value of the new function at any x value, the way you find that value is that you subtract 3 from it, the 3 units that we've shifted it to the right, you plonk that number that you get in here, this is just a number after all, x minus 3, whatever this value of x is, you just subtract 3 from it and you get a new number, you take that new number, you plonk it into this machine, some things happen, a value pops out, and you end up with a new function. So we just have a quick look at that. You're putting x minus 3 in, so the rule says for this function f of x, that whatever you put in, you take the negative of the square, and then you subtract 4 times the number that you put in. And then we're going to do some algebra and expand this out, and we're going to get minus x squared minus 6x plus 9, which is x minus 3 all squared, minus 4x minus 3.
So we're just treating this x minus 3 as any number, and we're just squaring it and take the negative of it and subtracting 4 times and then expanding it out. And simplifying, you put the minus sign inside the bracket by changing all the sign, and you put the minus 4 inside by multiplying. And then you collect the like terms. You've got x squared of minus 1, x, you've got plus 6 here and minus 4 there, and the plain numbers, you've got minus 9 and plus 12. You simplify all, all that out, and you end up with a new rule for r of x. Now, you'd be pretty, uh, be pretty clever if you can look at this value here, this line here, the r of x, the rule for the new function, and look at this rule for the old function, and say that they were related somehow. It, uh, it's not obvious or clear, but it is if you drew their graphs, because this is the graph, this red one here, is the graph of r of x, and the black one is the graph of f of x. You can see that they are related. They're the same shape, it's just that this, this red one has been shifted three units to the right. And that's the crucial thing. If you are moving your function to the right three, three units, you just put x minus 3 into the old rule. So somebody asks you to draw, they've shown you the graph of f of x, and they said draw the graph of f of x minus 3, then you just draw the, the same shape, and just slide it across three units. The same goes if you're shifting functions to the left, you, the, the new function on the left, L of x, is the same as f of x, but with the x with 1 added to it. So you use the old rule with different x values, and you get a completely new rule, but the graph of L of x, of the graph of f of x plus 1, is just the same as the graph of f of x, but shifted 1 unit to the left.